Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Technos product review. Today we have the latest entry on the market from Max Oak. Now you guys might know Max Oak from the Max Oak Blue Eddy 1500 watt hour power station that I reviewed a few months ago. It's still one of my favorite all time power stations. Now this is the little brother to that unit. This is 500 watt hours, but they also, just to confuse everybody, call this the Max Oak Blue Eddy, but this is the AC50 portable power station, AKA solar generator. There is a lot of tech packed into this mid-sized unit. It has really fast MPPT charging, a pure sign inverter, a wireless charger built into the top. So if you have a device that will charge wirelessly, you just set it on the top and boom, it'll charge up. That is super cool. And an actual functional lantern instead of the typical useless flashlight that you usually get in these things. So let's go check out the AC50. So what do you get inside? Okay, you have a box within a box, which contains the Blue Eddy branded AC charger. The power cable for the charger, a USB-C cord, a, an MC4 to eight millimeter. You can use this with a Jackery too, because it's using the same plug. And you have the 12 volt charger, again, eight millimeter plug. They also give you a soft case. Now this is just a super, super cheap, but hey, they include a bag. You can at least keep it uh, off the rain and off the dirt. And this tiny little book gives you this screen functionality here. It says choose a suitable solar panel from DC 14 to 40 volts, 120 watts is what's recommended by them. Now this does tell you right here that this cannot be charged fully by 12 volts from your car. It can charge halfway or maybe a little bit more than halfway because the, the battery voltage just doesn't allow it. Now it does say if you have a 24 volt vehicle, it will charge fully. Mentions overload, protection and all that, storage and maintenance. There are the technical specifications. And just like the other Blue Eddy products, it does have a list of troubleshooting codes. So if a code comes up on the screen, you can just look it up here and it'll tell you exactly what it means. It does say here that they only do a 90% depth of discharge. So that's built into the BMS. You cannot discharge the battery more than 90%. It does say it can be charged by two solar panels in series, as long as they are under 40 volts total. And it says, can two power stations be used in parallel? No. <laughs> Let's go over the quirks and features of the AC50. The AC50 touts a 500 watt hour lithium ion battery made with special automotive grade cells, good for at least 1000 cycles down to 80% capacity. This is 11.6 by 7.5 by 7.7 .7 inches at 13.6 pounds. Now this is an all PVC device that has this really interesting rubberized edging and it's offered in several different colors. You can actually replace this and change the color to at least a half dozen different colors if you want. It does have a foldable handle, which is really cool. And it does have a high quality backlit display that shows the five segment battery icon and input and output wattage for both AC and DC, just like its bigger brother. This does have a 300 watt pure sine inverter with two 110 volt AC outlets. This does sport MPPT charging, which means it will charge really fast from solar. And there are three ways to charge it from AC outlet, of course, from solar, like I just mentioned, and 12 volt. Now note that due to the design, this will not charge from a 12 volt source unless you use a third party inverter with the included AC charger, or you can actually charge this from 12 volts as long as the engine is running in your vehicle and it's getting at least 13.6 volts. Now what I'm trying to say is this will only charge up to about 50% if you plug it into your vehicle while it's not running. I do recommend if you want to charge it that way to get the best tech 300 watt pure sign inverter that I have up there on hobotech.tv slash Amazon. That will allow you to charge at the full 120 watt rate from any 12 volt source. So the charge times for this are six hours from AC outlet, which is at 85 watts, about four hours from solar, and that's at the maximum 120 watt rate, and pretty much never from 12 volt, like I said, unless the engine's running. This actually has three 12 volt outputs, one 10 amp cigarette lighter socket, 
And then two, three amp, 5.5 millimeter by 2.1 millimeter, or they're called 5521 barrel plugs. This touts five USB ports, two regular standard 2.4 amp, two regular three amp, and then one USB-C 45 watt power delivery port, which you can use to charge just about anything. And as mentioned, this actually does offer wireless charging. So if you have a device like a phone or a tablet that has a wireless charger built into it, so you can put on the DC power, set your device right on the top and charge it that way up to 10 watts. Now I don't have any devices that charge wirelessly, so I was unable to really test this. And it features a three-way lantern, which is yet another first on the Hobotech channel. Max Oak offers a one-year limited manufacturer's warranty on all their products. So of course I put this through the regular rigorous Hobotech testing procedures. First, we did a battery capacity test. Let's check that out. Starting voltage said 12.4, it took down to 12.3, but I think it's right on the border of 12.4 as a starting voltage. Okay, let's get the party started here. So there we go, 10 amps, we'll go ahead and let it run. Final results. Ending voltage is 9.62, 430.7 watt hours, 44.27 amp hours, 4 hours, 46 minutes. So as you can see, I was able to pull 430 watt hours from the claimed 500 watt hour capacity. That's 86%. That's very typical for the industry as nearly all these have a battery management system that will only allow you to discharge the battery down to the bottom 10%. And it saves that 10% in order to prevent the battery from getting destroyed. So typically getting 80 to 90% in that range is very good for a power station. I did test the 12 volt output on this. The Max Oak AC50 does not have a regulated 12 volt output. It does vary depending on the voltage of the battery. They do claim that the 12 volt output port will handle 10 amps. And in this case it does, we're able to pull 100 watts. Now I did a sine wave check to make sure this was a pure sine inverter. If you wanna know if this has a pure sine inverter, yes it does. I also did an inverter capacity test to make sure that this could at least put out the rated 300 watts. Okay, I have it on low heat. We're pulling just over 430 watts. Let's see how long it'll take it. This is claimed to be a 300 watt inverter. Okay, let's just go ahead. Let it run at 420 watts for five minutes. See how it handles it. All right, at about two and a half minutes in, we got another error 36. It does not like to push over 300 watts for any significant amount of time. As you can see, I had no problem getting 300 watts out of this, and it is rated up to 450 peak for up to two minutes, and that's exactly what I found in my results. So does this support pass-through charging? In other words, can you charge it while you're using it to charge other devices? Absolutely yes. It does have the charge port in the back on this, and you can charge this with 12 volt solar or AC while using all the DC ports, USB ports, and inverter at the same time. So I also did a max rate charge test to see how fast I can get this thing to charge when I vary the voltage. Currently running 12.4 volts, and it is not charging. It says it's charging at one watt, but that's considered practically not charging. So let's bump up the voltage. With the engine running in your car, truck, van, or RV, typically puts out about 13.6 volts. You will charge the Max Oak AC50 around 74 watts. That's not too bad. 14.3, which is typical top-up charge if you are charging by solar or you have a battery charger on board. While your batteries are charging, if you have this plugged into a 12 volt port, you will get 120 watts charging. Not bad. Let's see what the maximum is. Okay, 16.2, we're still at 120. 18.3, we're still at 120. 19.6, no change. 40.3, 41.2. Still taking it, 120 watts, no matter what you do. 
Regardless of voltage, that's it, guys. It finally took mid 40 volts to give me a over voltage error message. There we go. Drop it to 40 and it comes right back on. So 40 is the maximum voltage. Let's see where it actually starts doing 120 watts of charging. It looks like here you need to put at least 14 volts in. So if you can put 14 volts in, you will get the maximum 120 watts and this goes all the way up to 40 volts, it maxes out 120 watts. So if you guys wanna know what the maximum charge rate of this is, it's 120 watts between 14 and 40 volts. As you can see, the maximum charge rate on this is 120 watts no matter how many amps or how many volts you press into it. So as long as the voltage is between 14 to 40 volts, you can get 120 watt charge rate out of this. Now, unlike a lot of power stations, this one is definitely set up to be charged by solar more than anything else. So this gives it the official status of a solar generator. Note that my test proves that it will charge from a running vehicle, provided that the alternator is giving the battery 13.6 volts. So you can completely charge this from a running vehicle or RV. And you can get the full 120 watt charge rate if you can supply 14.4 volts into this. Now that would happen if your rig batteries are topped up and you have solar running on your rig, charging the batteries, or if you're plugged in the shore power and you're running your battery charger or you're using like a gas generator to charge your batteries. If your battery charge in your rig is 14.4 volts, this will charge at its maximum 120 watt rate all the way to full. So don't go by what it says on Amazon on their website that it won't charge from 12 volts. They mean it'll only charge up to 50% on 12 volts if you're charging it from a 12 volt lead acid battery that's not being charged. And note, at 120 watts, this will charge in four hours. That's pretty good for a 500 watt hour power station. I did a USB output rate check on this. I am testing it this time using a direct USB-C cable to this other power station which accepts 60 watts input and as you can see I'm getting 34 watts input. As you can see I was only able to pull 34 watts out of the port charging another power station. However, that's not really the best case scenario. So what do I like about the AC50 by Max Oak? Well, my favorite all-round power station to date is the Max Oak Blue Eddy 1500 watt hour. The AC50 is basically a smaller version of that that's more affordable, more portable. Uh, for those people who don't wanna lug around a 40 pound battery and don't need a thousand watt inverter. Uh, contrary to popular belief, not everybody needs a giant battle-worn battery with a thousand watt inverter on it. Uh, a lot of people will be very happy with something this size. Now this is the same or even better quality than the Max Oak Blue Eddy 1500 watt because they have improved their product since that came out. This is brand new and it's definitely state of the art. This does have a lot of functionality right out of the box. It's gonna be suitable for most. Now what else do I like? The fact that you can charge this in four hours thanks to the built-in MPPT charger. I also like the fold flat handle, the awesome, very practical lantern that's built into the back. I hate flashlights. I hate flashlights in power stations. I always make fun of them, but for the first time, they put something practical that you could use while you're camping because everybody needs a lantern while they're camping. I like the sleek display, the power delivery port, the pure sign inverter. It's got a nice mid-range 500 watt hour lithium battery that's guaranteed for a thousand cycles at least. And it's actually at a very competitive price it's really hard not to recommend this. Now, what I don't like about this, why, oh why, did you not put a regulated 12 volt output on this? The 1500 watt version has a regulated 12 volt output. This has the same display. I would think you're using the same technology. Why did you not include it into this device? I have no idea. This is really the only major flaw I was able to find with this. If this had a 12 volt regulated output, it would be near perfect. Now, the fact of the matter is not everyone's going to need or use a regulated 12 volt output. Most people nowadays are gonna use the USB, the inverter, or the wireless charger for pretty much most of the time. So I don't think it really kills the product not having a 12 volt regulated output, but I'm still wondering why they didn't do it. Now, another thing that really makes me scratch my head is this thing can charge at 120 watts, but they don't include a 120 watt charger. 
The charger that comes with this that you plug into the wall will charge at only 85 watts. Now, why didn't they include a 120 watt charger? My guess is they wanted to extend the battery life as much as possible. So they figure, hey, charge it slower and the battery will last longer. That's great, but a lot of us charge these with AC power from a generator or whatever or off their inverters and want to charge this thing at the max four hour rate. With the 85 watt power supply that comes with this, it takes like six to seven hours. Now again, it's not a game changer or a killer, but why did you not just include the larger charger? I don't know. Yes, you can still charge this in four hours from about 200 watts of solar panels, or if you plug it into a 12 volt port that has 14.4 volts coming out of it, like I mentioned before. Now I wanted to come up with three things I didn't like about this, and I had to really stretch for the third item. Now I don't understand why Max Oak didn't have these outlets facing outward so you can plug larger wall warts onto it. I don't know, but it's really a minor thing. So the current price for the AC50 is $374.99, which is really a good deal when you're comparing this to something like a Jackery Explorer 500. Now that's with the current coupon code and the discount you can get through Hobotech. You know, those things could change at any time and drive this price way up into the sky again. But for now, $374.99. Of course, the main competitor to this for size and price is the Jackery Explorer 500. They're very similar in capacity and very similar in price once you factor in the discounts, although this is about 50 bucks cheaper as it currently stands. Uh, the Jackery does have the regulated 13.3 volt output on it, which may be a deciding factor for a lot of people. It also has a larger 500 watt pure sine inverter. Well, this only has a 300 watt pure sine inverter. The Jackery also has about 70 watt hours more usable capacity built into it, but the AC50 beats it with double the charge rate, more and faster USB charging, wireless charging, and don't forget the cool ass lantern. So who is this product aimed at? I'd have to say this is the solar generator for most. It's just the right size, just the right price, has all the modern tech. The only thing missing is that regulated 12 volt output. This is still great for a CPAP machine as long as you're running off the pure sign inverter and you can literally power any laptop, tablet, or other small device off of this with all the various outputs on it. The recommended solar panel size on this is gonna be at least 150 watts. I'm gonna personally recommend 200 watts, especially if you have the panels mounted on your rig on a flat surface, you're gonna want the extra wattage. If you have some suitcase kits, I think you can get away with 150 to 170 watts to charge this at its max rate. Otherwise, I'm gonna recommend you get a pair of the 100 watt Bouge RV solar panels I did a review on earlier. They're relatively cheap, they're relatively portable. If you wanna get something a little more quality, uh, look for something, maybe a pair of the Rock Pals panels or a pair of Renogy panels or Renogy suitcase kits. As long as it gets you around 200 watts, this thing will charge at its max rate. Now, if you want recommendations for actual solar panels for this, go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon. I have the link below where I have some recommended folding kits, portable panels that will actually work really well with this. Don't forget the Amazon link and the code to get the discount is in the description below. So go down there and look for that. Thanks for watching. If you learned something, be sure to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Until next time. <laughs>